Hey guys, uh, good morning. I'm testing out a new lapel microphone setup that may actually improve some of the uh, outdoor filming. We have the uh, lens that goes lens. We have the microphone that goes on top of the camera, but sometimes you want to be uh, able to just uh, get a small amount of uh, vocalization, like someone talking, rather than everything that's going on around you, which is what I do a lot of the time. So we're trying this out, and if this works, it'll be very nice. It'll also help with some of the podcast ideas that we're doing. Well, that works. Excellent. I see I touch my face an awful lot while I'm thinking, but yeah, the sound actually works, and it sounds warm and quite good. Yeah, I think that's going to work out all right. So that's nice. You may have noticed I am totally flushed, and that is because it's very, very humid again. Never used to be like this in summer in the UK. It used to be hot, but dry and nowadays it's more like uh, a wet heat it's like being in a shower all the time that's not good so climate change i don't care what people say climate change is happening i'll argue uh, and happily argue over what's causing it we don't really have uh, full data on that but it's definitely happening so let's uh, let's put that aside shall we come on i think we can all agree that what we get now isn't what we used to get Anyway, I've got today a lot of work in the office. My toe is still uh, severely damaged, so walking around is still a problem. But my knee is healing, so game hammer. Hopefully we'll get that back in the next week or so. But for everything else, I've got a lot of work to do. Let's get on. So, the reason that I wanted to test the lapel mic is because I'm currently sat in the uh, lounge. The lapel mic is actually on the sofa instead of being attached to me, so I can move around a little bit more without pulling the camera, because I have quite a distance. And if I was recording with the camera's microphone, it would be very echoey in here. Hopefully this is a bit more focused. The reason I'm not in the office is it's far too humid to be in a small enclosed space. So I've come down to work in a more breezy area, basically. So I've got a bit more air. But I want to do a few uh, questions and answers today. That's the main thing. So I'm going to start with uh, the, the furthest back question that I've got and then move forward. And uh, hopefully this looks all right for you. So what we have here is Retro Mickey 82 on the uh, Let's Laugh at uh, DVDs. <laughs> that was a good video. So it's lots of uh, VHS order wacky movies are getting very expensive now, sadly. I've, he's after a lot of them that he loved as a kid, but most had content which was cut in DVDs. I think we may have covered the cut content before in one of the responses, but the main thing I want to talk about here is the fact that a lot of older films are because Becoming expensive and uh, the reason for that is a lot of films didn't move from VHS over to DVD. DVD required like digital remastering and all sorts of techniques that not everyone at the time was able to do and now that we've moved on even further past DVD we're into Blu-ray and streaming it still requires that digital expertise to get the original uh, footage off of VHS or the original film stock or whatever it was on and then move it over onto the digital format. Not everyone has that ability. I know I do because I've pretty much wired every single device in this house up to every other device. I can transfer from pretty much anything. But your average person doesn't have that because why would you? Unless you're a nerd, why would you have that? And especially when it's uh, low budget independent films where they made it... Uh, they 20, 30 years ago. They may not even have the original film stock anymore. All they've got is the VHS copies that they made, like a few thousand of, and put them out to, to see if they could uh, make it in the film business. Why would they be expected to have all this ability to move uh, digital footage? So a lot of this stuff just didn't get done. Uh, what was it? Phant Phantasmagoria or Phantasms or something like that. The one, the horror film series with the, uh, the guy in the suit and the weird silver ball thing. I know that uh, he actually had uh, an offer from a friend to help him digitally remaster the entire film so that it could come out on DVD. And that's great, but when you, you don't have people like that available all the time, which most people don't, I mean, come on, it's very hard. And that's why VHS is the only option when you want to see some of these films, unless someone's pulled it onto YouTube or something like that. But even then, it'll be lower quality than the original. So that's why the VHS is the only copy. And since these were often low print run and certainly aren't available in any other format, if you want to see it, you've got to get the VHS. So 
lowers the supply and demand, price goes up. Only to be expected. Doesn't mean it's nice, especially for those of us who actually want to see the thing, but it's, it is how it is, and that's just that's just the situation. Hopefully, nothing of mine will ever be in that situation, because I do like to keep things up to date. So what else have we got here? Um, now we're going over to the War of the Worlds, where we moved it. Jen and I and a few guys from Bolton uh, Model Railway Society took the War of the Worlds uh, layout that Jen and her friends built on Great Model Railway Challenge Series 2. And it was stored in our uh, conservatory. I'm pointing over to the conservatory. It was stored in our conservatory for about 18 months after the show. It got moved down to the Model Railway Society so people can actually see it and enjoy it. Um, McBen Man 1 says, What a magnificent railway. Is this the railway that was built on the Model Railway Challenge TV show? Yes, it absolutely is. There's a few bits that got damaged in the move and actually damaged in storage is quite possible when it was stored for the show and then after the show and moved to that story then moved from that story to here and then moved from here down to the model railway society not everything is uh, quite in one piece anymore uh, one of the martians fell apart during the move uh, it's not a it's not the hardest repair ever so it'll all get fixed up and it'll look wonderful again but yeah it's the same one from the tv series so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's the only one from the Rail Riders group that uh, did survive the show because the toy... I want to say Toy Story, it's not. The children's bedroom that had been haunted and uh, possessed by a monster, that one had to get taken apart. And Dr. Evil's uh, volcano lair, that one had to be taken apart. And the, apparently the paint was still drying on it as they took it apart because there just wasn't enough storage. It would have been great to store all three. And in fact, Jen really, really misses the uh, Dr. Evil one. She thinks it's her favourite, but there wasn't space and only one could be kept. So they kept War of the Worlds. That's television for you. When we were down at the 5-inch gauge model railway, Flymer Chairman 1 says, Did they let you have a shot on that Gronk in the last few shots there? Ross as if they didn't. It looked like a great day out for everyone. Uh, no, I didn't go on the uh, ride on Gronk. That's a Class 8 uh, diesel shunter. That's about the only locomotive I know. Jen will be impressed by my knowledge of that one. She won't. She really, really won't. But, um... No, I didn't go on it. I'm not the most coordinated of people. I don't drive. I don't have the best in terms of uh, eyesight and uh, peripheral vision. And I generally don't want to put myself in a position where I might damage other people's stuff. So I didn't go on it. It was a nice day out and I, I got to film a lot, which is always nice. And I, I like making the videos as well. It's one of the reasons I do this vlog, to keep my hand in on editing and things like that. So I had a great day for that, and everyone else had a great day playing with the trains. So all in all, it was a good day, but no, I didn't uh, go on any of the trains. <laughs> if there'd been a carriage I could have just sat on and got to run all around, maybe I'd have done that, but no, I would never have driven one. On the same video, McBenman1 says, Oh wow, she's so lucky to have the opportunity to do this. I'm glad you had a good day there. Also, a really good shots of the train. Thank you so much. Jen and I have both... Uh, together she, she uh, follows a lot of my uh, direction on this stuff with the camera angles and how to film certain things we worked out quite a while ago now uh, some good angles that uh, give power shots of vehicles that were filming and things like that and it works so well so i'm glad you enjoyed that because it was a lot of work to line up the shots and uh, edit everything together but i think we worked out really well with that so i'm glad you enjoyed it and yeah it was a great See what I mean? No coordination. And yeah, it was a great day out. Uh, on the same video, this is a comment that uh, doesn't seem to fit, but okay. Um, Hadley says, come back to West Horton, there's loads of graffiti. It's just one of those things. Uh, while I was a councillor in West Horton North and Tumor, I made a massive effort to try and clean the town up and keep it clean because vandals and thugs were just spray painting the entire place. So when I lost the election and uh, I was basically uh, told on doorsteps that I wasn't doing anything for the community, I thought, well, what's the point? If I'm paying out my own money to clean this place up with, by buying the, the supplies, none of it was council provided. Everything that I did for the cleanup was uh, provided by me. I thought, why bother? If I'm, if I'm going to be told that I never do anything and that people never see me around, why bother? So I stopped. 
But the other reason is uh, when I started doing that clean-up, the vandals and thugs made a concerted effort to put out more graffiti. So, th so it's like a combined thing. I'm putting all this effort in and people are saying I never do anything, which is disheartening. I mean, I don't do it for credit. I never did. That wasn't the point. But to be told, oh, we never see you around, you don't do anything because I'm always out there, always doing something, that hurts. So I stopped. And also, if I'm going to be doing this and getting told I wasn't doing anything and then they were just going to make more of a mess, in the end, what's the point? So it is what it is. The last but not least, Terry Hooper on the first video of this comeback with the vlogs says, uh, good to see a new video. Thank you, Terry. It's good to be back. It's uh, I've wanted to get these vlogs back again for quite a while, but we've just been snowed under with stuff. So it was a case of, do I do a slapdash vlog in order to be able to get on with the other projects? Or do I take a little bit away from the projects I was doing in order to do the vlog? I decided it was best to put all my effort into getting those uh, projects done and then come back afterward when we had the time to do it properly. And that's what I did. Okay, thank you so much, guys. And uh, right, that's it for Q&A. But that's not all, of course, because two years ago, we bought an archive hard drive. Two terabytes sits next to the Mac and it stores the entire archive. Well, two years is a fair amount of time to be storing a lot of video information and we filled it. Well, I say we filled it, about uh, 50, 60 gigabytes is left on the two terabyte drive. So time to add another one. Four terabytes this time. It's a tad larger than the uh, last one, but should serve us for a while. At least I hope it's going to serve us for a while. I'm going to link that in. Get that set up and then we should be good to go for quite a while longer. I like to keep the archive. A lot of people have asked me in the past, do you actually use it? Yeah, we do. Anytime Jen's referring back to a previous uh, build or a running session with a trains or anything like that, I'll pull the information out of the archive. Anytime I'm referring back in the vlog, like uh, the time we went and climbed a mountain or when we went off and uh, had a great day sailing in the boat, that kind of thing. I'll pull the uh, footage from the archive. That's what it's for. So we do use it, uh, keep all the game hammers on there. That time that I put up all of the first three series as uh, massive uh, compilations on the Game Hammer channel. That came from the archive, just stuck them together and there we were. Basically, any time that I'm using uh, previous footage, it's coming from the archive, so we use it a lot. I've got to now stick that in there. Also, we need another backup for all of the house and Life Naughty Mouse and the comic things. Time to get another copy of that backed up, so that will go on there as well. It's basically a big, important piece of uh, our office equipment. So I've got to sort out for the rest of the day, transferring the information that I need around on the archive, making sure everything is backed up, setting it up nicely, and that's my day. So, in other words, that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. If you liked today's video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And an extra special thanks goes out to Chief89 and Tepic. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm going to be here for a few hours. So, see you tomorrow. <laughs>